The Avenue Nature Reserve has been created from the ashes of an old coking works. In 1956, production started of smokeless fuels, but by 1992, all that was left was a heavily polluted waste ground that was given the label of being the worst polluted site anywhere in Europe. As part of the clean-up process, bucket traps were laid. Mammals, amphibians and reptiles were all removed safely. The plant you see working here is removing all of the contaminants from the site. On completion, part of what is left will become an extension of the Avenue Washlands Nature Reserve. The leaf loss has probably doubled in the last week, but we've had some very high winds and some heavy rain over the last few days. Um, which is probably the reason for it, but yeah, looks very different in a week. Autumn is, uh, is truly upon us now. That's a, well, that was a black cap. These blue tits look absolutely gorgeous in this early morning sun. The blue tits are another one of those birds that people just take for granted. I mean, look at the colours on that. Birds of paradise. Don't need them. In winter, goldfinches gather in flocks. These are called charms. The greenfinch has been a rare visitor to the avenue. It has been suffering from a disease called trichomonosis. But just recently, numbers appear to be on the increase. Here we have two more greenfinch with a bullfinch. The bullfinch nationally is in decline, but here at the avenue we have a very large population. Female bullfinch. It's in the same area that we saw the male earlier. Steve, we've got a flock of field fair Just flying around the edges of the reserve. There's probably about 60 birds there, perhaps. There we go. These birds travel from Scandinavia and the subarctic to take advantage of our autumn berry crops and milder winters. Red wings visit from the same areas as the field fair and often travel together. It is an unmistakable bird with its red flanks and very distinctive pale supercilium and mustachial stripes. That's a great shot with a red wing. It's beautiful high patterns. And there you can see the reason why it's called a red wing. Yeah. You can tell by its chest. It's got that sort of leopardy pattern sort of thing, you know. There's the song thrush again. The teal is our smallest duck, numbers on the avenue at the moment have reached into the twenties. We do have a small breeding population in Britain, 
but most of our wintering ducks come from the middle latitudes of the western Palearctic. Look, look, come here. Look, so you can see these widgets, so you know you definitely see them. There's two there, look, male on that side, female there. I can't see. Male there, female there. Oh, yeah. If they're yeah. together now, do you think they're going to make next? The winter visitors oh. to us. Why do birds ever come to England? It's so cold. Oh, because it's, it's warmer than where they come from and there's more food available for them. Two, two teal at the front and there's two, two gadwall swimming from right to left and they're just disappearing behind the reeds now. Yeah. Fine. You got them? Yeah? Yeah. Gone now. Just look at the colours on those mallard. Mallards are another species that is in decline, not only in this country but worldwide. Just four years ago we could expect to count into the hundreds. This year the average count has been 20 to 30. Here we can see the display of the males. Ducks start their courtship early compared with other birds and will be some of the first to have young next spring. There's a little creek diving under again. Oh, there it is, or oh, she, whichever it might be. Non breeding plumage, as they call it nowadays. This is Fergus reporting on fungus. We had a very good day this morning. We saw roughly about 20 species of fungus, from wax caps to puffballs and many other varieties. I'm down here on the river where um, I'm hoping. Hope Hoking. Hoking? You're hoking? I'm down here on the river where I'm hoping to see a kingfisher because um, I've only ever seen it once and um, I really want some video of it so... Um, it's there, it's just flown past you it's just gone right behind you it just flew right past you behind you and gone up that way The kingfisher? <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh my god <laughs> I bet. Well, there you go. I, I bet when we play that back, I bet you, you might even see the blue flash go behind you. I bet. You. Well, you know, there you go. Kingfisher just flew past. <laughs> well, that is lucky. <coughs> <laughs> um, Excellent. Well done. Oh, God. It's a shame you weren't facing that way, though, because you'd have seen it then. Maybe I'll fly back past. It might do, it might right. do. Well, there you go, there you have it. Kingfisher just flew past, which was very yeah, lucky. Gone again. Are you being honest? Honestly, just flew again. Did you miss it? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, I'm jealous. Just hoping for a kingfisher. 
I've just got down here from two sightings with my dad made. <laughs> and I've seen it twice this morning. Fergus has been too busy for this. <laughs> I've been speaking to you and then it was past me twice. We'll just have to see it come past here. We never did see the Kingfisher again this morning. I was gutted myself, but hopefully we'll see it again soon. We did get to see some great birds, like this yellow hammer. And later on, it's fantastic and beautiful without tips. Down a bit, across. It's gone down. No, it's still up. Got in camera. Why? Oh, where is it? Where is it, Dad? No, I don't want to Stuck in the net. <laughs> Pardon me. Here we go, baby. Yeah. Very nice. Have a willow pit, Stuart. Thank you very Hello. Much. Just ringing some more birds, you know? Doing the usual. No, we've had them before. Oh, don't you? You keep one this morning. I did, I did one, yeah. Have a willow. Dad, now let it go. Because it can't get foodies. Can I get foodies, Dad? Dad, can I get food in? Mm. I've never seen a one of it before. Oh, that's a cool little thing. Can I start? Can I start? Yeah, you just... Baby. Yeah. You just look different. Yeah. There's... This is a... Willow tit. Uh, quite a cute little thing. Beautiful. And I'm just going to let it go. Where we ring them are coming, the group does, isn't it? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Right, really? Really? Oh, it's just it's just nibbling, nibbling, yeah. It is nibbling me. Nice gentle grip. Nice gentle grip. There it is. In front of the lens, in front of the screen. Uh, just about to let it go. Off you go, boy. Yeah. Again. Shoot it into the sun so the definition's lost a little bit, but. That's a grey partridge. And that's one of nine that I've just seen fly over the footpath near the Duck Marsh Meadow. And some more. There's another one. Pied Wagtail, there's three or four of them flying around at the moment. There's another one just sat on the bank. See if I can get him in. There we go. Probably hear another one chattering away behind me. It's late November and things are starting to change. The mornings are getting much colder. I don't know if you can see in the centre of that shot a 
I'm shooting right into the sun, which is really awkward. There's a little owl. Just see its head moving there. That's just flown out of the Duck Marsh Meadow as I got to the viewing point at the top. That's catching a bit of early morning sun. They do like to sunbathe first thing in the morning. You can see how well these birds are camouflaged. I mean here it's quite easy to see. But imagine this bird in the base of a reed bed. It wouldn't be so easy then. As you can see, we've had some snow. But it's even more vital that these tables are kept topped up in this kind of weather conditions, as the birds really do struggle to find food. Not only is it important to top the tables up, but to clean them as well. The disease that Fergus mentioned earlier, trichomonosis, that affects chaffinches and greenfinches, is passed on through bird droppings left on bird tables. So it's very important to keep them clean. That camouflage we mentioned earlier, not so good for the sniper in these conditions. The job for this month's work party is to clear scrub from the wetland meadow. It's important to keep shrubs like willow, alder and gauze under control, because if we don't we'll lose this very rare habitat. And as you can see the volunteers work very hard and they're not put off by these harsh weather conditions. But a fire doesn't only keep us warm, it makes sure that plants like willow can't get a grip as the cuttings can soon root. And now it's time for that all important hot drink. But this month we're joined by this little chap. <laughs> 